Let me explain something to y'all frowsy, wide bite bitches. What y'all not going to do is get on this internet that Al Gore blessed us with and come for my auntie Anita Baker. And then when I put a post out talking about what y'all want me to talk about, disrespect me talking about Anita Baker and Babyface. Oh, y'all want me to talk about it? I'm finna talk about it. Here you go. Nessa girl, y'all so doggone disrespectful. Y'all don't have no respect for anybody that I respect and that I love and that I hold dear to my heart. Now, I put a post up on Instagram to see, I was, this how y'all act. When I get a little more consistent and I try to give y'all more videos on a, on a daily basis or whatever, and I ask y'all what y'all want me to talk about. Y'all want me to talk about people I love? Did y'all really think I was going to get on this thing and go off? On Anita Baker. Probably because I am. Okay. Here's the gag, y'all. Babyface put out a tweet. She was in Newark, New Jersey. And he said he found out, you know, uh, the, the concert started two hours late. And he said he found out per Miss Anita Baker that she didn't want him to go on so she could do her full set. Right? That was the text. No backstory. No context. And then the internet just ran, ran, ran with their own narratives. Everybody started coming out to Woodworth saying Anita Baker's been a diva. Stephanie Mills had something to say. Cheryl Lynn retweeted something. Uh, Lonnie Love talked about how Anita, she opened for Anita Baker 15 years ago and had issues. And everybody who ever had some beef with Anita had something to say. Y'all even reached bike. And start pulling up old beats with Luther Vandross and all the girls over Miss Anita Baker. And y'all didn't even have the details. Now, quiet as it's kept money. I was finna get my ass on this little uh, Al Gore's internet. And I was finna give Anita a little piece of my mind. I was finna give her ass the best that I got, baby. And then I said, let me scour the internet just a little more to figure out if there's just a little more information that we can give. Now, here's the gag, right? Everybody was saying she, had, she was, she, Anita was two hours late and she was been a diva. We find out that was not the case, all right? First and foremost, I'm finding out that the venue in Newark, New Jersey does not play. They have a strict 11 o'clock p.m. Cutoff policy reminds me of Chastain Park. It's an outdoor venue in Atlanta in the Chastain Buckhead area. It's an outdoor amphitheater and they have a noise ordinance situation and, and they have a cutoff time and they literally, you could be in the middle of singing a song and at that time, they flip that switch and that them lights and stuff go off, the sound go off and everything. And then I'm hearing, you could be fine if you go past the thing, whatever, whatever the case may be. All right, so here's the situation, right? And it is it is a very sticky situation because the concert started two hours late and they were up against an 11 o'clock curfew. Here's the thing. You know, it's Anita Baker's tour and she is the headliner. But we are not going to sit up here and pretend as if Babyface is not as big of a draw as Anita Baker is as well. Now, from, and I'm just speaking from a fan's perspective. From a fan's perspective, many of us are left feeling like both of them should have cut their set short. Honestly and truthfully, my honest belief is Babyface should have came out and did three songs and then Anita Baker could have cut her set by three songs. And I'm going to tell you the reason I believe that. Number one, I went to her Vegas residency show at the Venetian and the show was, was astounding. I came to the Miami show, 
when she came here. The Miami show was not as good as what she did in Vegas. It was the same show with a little remix to it. Vegas, she had order and structure. At the Miami show, she did the top of the show, which was structure. Then she just had a bunch of papers on the piano and her lyric sheets. And she literally started asking the audience, what song y'all want me to sing? And people would throw out songs and she'd be like, ooh, that's a hard one. Or then she'd be like, ooh, okay. And then she would tell the pianist to start that song. They would cue the band and they would play it. So seeing as though the Miami show was a part of the very tour that she's doing now, there was room for her, in my, in my honest opinion, as a fan, that she could have cut out a couple songs to allow Babyface to do a couple songs because that is what people came to see. That is what people paid their money for. That's me thinking as a fan. Now, I'm going to step out of my fan seat and I am going to step into my artist seat. All right. Now, I've never been a musical artist. I don't know what it all entails. I don't know what's considered the proper protocol and what is industry courtesy for an artist. But I am willing to bet that the culture and tour culture is one of which all concessions get made for the headliner. My spirit is telling me that's the way it works on tour. If there's anything that needs to be cut or modified, it gets modified by the opening act or the little ancillary acts because at the end of the day, this is my tour put on by my people, organized by my team, backed by my investors. You are just a little sprinkle on top. Now, you know, personally, I am willing to bet Babyface, his band, his DJ, and whatever the case may be, still got paid because they showed up and were there prepared to do the job. It's the fans that got fucked, right? So before we get mad with Auntie Anita, we need to take a moment, get out of our emotions, and understand the protocols of the business. However, there still was room for Anita to step out of her artist hat, step into the fans, and let Babyface do his thing, or he could have came out did a duet with her, sung a couple songs, and at a minimum, she should have provided an explanation to the audience as to what was going on. Now, a lot of people got in my social media and were saying that because it was two hours late and that even after they started the concert, there were still technical issues, including some of the screens not working, that they just walked out of the concert. And I hate this because... Uh, up until now, you know, Anita has been getting stellar reviews uh, about her concert or at a minimum not getting any bad reviews. So y'all leave Auntie and her wigs alone, okay? Mama on her last leg and literally because she was limping across the stage in Vegas and she was limping down in Miami. She is literally on her last leg and her last good wig and she need her coins, all right? So let that be that. Moving right along. Regina Carter uh, jumped on social media today, y'all. And she was expressing herself uh, because she went to the internet about the issues that she was having with the young man that she was dating, saying that she was in love. And she was saying, you know, y'all, I'm surprised at how many people jumped on me and attacked me. You know, I'm young. We grew up on the internet. We grew up on MySpace. We grew up on this. This is just how we do. And I, I'm human. I feel just like y'all. Like, can I not be human? Can I not do the same things everybody else do? And then, you know, Toya followed up with a message citing how all these kids go to the Internet with all their issues and that they're really weird and that they need to get them some friends, some close to friends to talk to. And I understand Regine's point because all she's doing is mimicking what she's been raised up in as far as running to the Internet with everything. And me and Toya are in the same age bracket. So I definitely side with Toya 
100%. But here is the one point, and I left this comment on the Shade Rooms page, and I'm going to explain it to y'all. Regine asked the question. She said, I'm human. Can I not do the same things that everybody else does? And the answer is no, baby, you can't. And while I feel for your pain and I feel that I feel for you that you're going through human emotions, the same emotions that everybody else does, unfortunately, you do not get to do the same things that everybody else does. And here is why. You are a celebrity and you live a very privileged life. All right. I have told y'all this time and time and time again. The universe will always stay in balance. It is impossible for the universe to ever not be in balance. All right? So if you are given all of this, you are given all of this in terms of money, fame, access, notoriety, opportunities, you got to pay for this, baby. The universe going to take it from over here. And just as much as you got up here, it's going to take this much, the same weight it's going to take from down here to do what? Bring it into balance, baby. So I always say this when celebrities and public figures get on the internet and vent about not being treated like regular people. My response consistently has always been, you live a very privileged life. You're going to pay on the front end or the back end, but you're going to pay. And everything in this life has a cost. When I went down to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, they did teach me the chief principle of economics, which is there is no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Everything has a cost. And baby, giving up privacy, being subject to people's hate, vitriol, comments, tweets, posts, videos, uh, misunderstanding you, false narratives that they put out about you, uh, uh, security breaches, those are all the cost that one pays for living a rich, fabulous uh, celebrity life. And if you are unwilling to pay the cost with style and grace, then disappear into the background. And many people will argue she was born into this. True. So were a lot of other celebrities who have children, who we don't even know their names, who live regular lives. Yes, she was born into it. We know her name as Regina Carter, but she didn't have to go into a life of being a celebrity. She could have went off and been a school teacher. She could have went off and been a librarian. Look at Chelsea Clinton. Chelsea Clinton is one of the most visible people we've ever seen as a teenager. I can assure you now, Chelsea Clinton walk her ass in the Circle K. Ain't nobody taking no pictures of her and it ain't TMZ blog worthy. If Chelsea Clinton break up with her husband or break up with her boyfriend, it ain't in the blog because she ain't all on the Instagram being a celebrity. There are countless celebrities with children who live regular lives. So, you know, Regine, you chose a celebrity life, daughter. I love you. I think you're great. But to answer your question, you can't do what regular people do. And take this as a learning lesson, mama, and listen to your mama. Get off the internet with it. Even your explanation of being human, it's as if you're seeking something from outside sources. You did the video explaining yourself because once again, you wanted some emotional love back from people who don't give a damn about you. People who you entertain. Your only purpose in life for them is to entertain them. And once again, they were entertained by your woe is me story. You don't get to be regular, daughter. And the quicker you realize that and stop expecting that, things will be better for you. Speaking of being regular 
and having privacy. Jamie Foxx. Y'all, they say he's sick down bad to the hospital. Um, and now, you know, things are swirling about, you know, you, you know, celebrities are starting to take a different tone, which is stop asking what's wrong with him and what he did and just start praying. You know, there have been little drips and drips and drips that have been coming out of his camp as it relates to, you know, family members preparing for the worst and we don't know what's going on. Here is the thing. All of us are praying for Jamie. We don't want anything to happen to Jamie. We want him a full recovery. Period. Hard stop. My second statement is, um, by nature, human beings and animals are inquisitive creatures. We're inquisitive. When it comes to celebrity, you don't get to reap the benefits of us being in your business when it's great. But then when things are not so great, you don't want us to be in your business. That's not how it works. Now, I completely understand family members being frustrated, close friends being frustrated and being like, damn, get out of his business. Just pray. Give him some privacy. Right. But that's just not how celebrity works. And it probably won't work that way in our lifetime. Um, now, here's the thing. You know, um, I have heard through my celebrity friend, Grapevine, that things are not well. All right. Um, I've heard something specific and I'm not going to repeat that because that's not my place um, as to his condition. But I have heard that things are not well and that they're not looking good at all. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. With that being said, in order to pray, that's all the information that we need, right? So, all in all, when the dust settles, the shit will hit the fan, and we will know when it's time to know. But y'all just pray for the man, because here is what we can deduce, all right? He's been in the hospital for three going on four weeks, if not four weeks already. I had a family member a few weeks ago that had a heart attack and was home in three days. They were, they were home in three days. Um, this is what we can deduce. Jamie Foxx is not at a place where he can speak or be on camera. And here is why I say that. When you are a star, as big as Jamie Foxx is, you have projects that you've already signed contracts for that people are already garnering funding for and casting and putting together, you know, at least a year or two out. When you're sick, when you break a leg, when you fall, your first order of business is to reassure the studios, the labels, the investors that their investment is solid. And typically, celebrities do that by posting from the bed, hey, y'all, it's Funky Doniva. Yeah, y'all, I'm not doing good. Y'all pray for me, but I'll be back. You put out something to reassure the public and the financiers that their money is good and that you'll be back on the saddle in no time. And the fact that Jamie has physically been unable to reassure the people that their bag is safe suggests that he's unable to. So let's just pray. And last but not least, y'all, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Did y'all see the post going around where everybody talking about chivalry ain't dead and Ben Affleck opened up the door for Jennifer Lopez? Is it me? Or was Ben Affleck looking like the crib keeper by the face? Let me tell you something. He opened that door for Jennifer Lopez's ass and he slammed that shit so goddamn hard her eardrum was about to bust. Let me tell you something, Negro. Don't be a chivalrous man for me if you're going to help me get in the car but tear up my damn eardrum in, uh, in the process. Mama already tone deaf as fuck. She need all the hearing she can to keep her note when she sing, okay? And look, the way Ben has aged, 
since he married Jennifer Lopez, it looked like she putting it on his ass, okay? Now listen, I don't believe in a lot of the black magics and the dark arts, but baby, she don't put some of that Santeria coochie on his ass, and Ben, it looked like he's sucking up, she's sucking the life out of Ben's face. Ben's face looked all gaunt. It was like this. It was looking all sucked in. He looked upset. Quiet as his cap. If I was J-Lo, I'd have got my ass out of the car and called the Uber. Because what you not finna do is slam no dough on me. Okay? While my ear right here. I need my hearing. And y'all know J-Lo don't play by her coins. She will leave a man over her career. She already can't hear her notes in order to hit her notes. And you about to bust out her eardrum on this side by the dough? Just the side people do like this. Huh? She need, it's always this side right here. And this was the side where the passenger door was. You about to bust out her holy ear. Huh? See, I can't, I can't hit my note without Huh? Anyway, y'all. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. Y'all hoes be sure to like and subscribe if you knew around these parts. And I'll call y'all wide back hoes later. Bang.